Hey, it's Barb from Wonderful Works. If you work with kids, does your student's behavior ever feel like a mystery? Well, today we're going to learn how to become a behavior detective. So glad you're here today. Hey there, got a mystery? Oh, you have a student who has really challenging behavior every Sunday and you just don't know why? Hmm, sounds like you need a detective. Sometimes our students' behaviors are a mystery, and a lot of times, that's A-OK. -okay. But if you have a student who's regularly engaging in challenging behavior that you just don't understand, then you may need to do a little detective work yourself. Today we're going to learn how to do just that, challenging behavior in the classroom, becoming a behavior detective. So becoming a behavior detective is actually pretty simple. There's just three easy steps. First, when a behavior happens, look for clues. Stop and ask yourself what was going on right before the behavior happened. Second, ask yourself some hard-hitting questions like these. What was the environment like when the behavior happened? Was it noisier, smellier, or more chaotic than usual? Was the student given a request that may have felt confusing, too challenging, or might have made them feel anxious in another way? When does this behavior usually happen? Is it when they first come in, during certain activities, or when switching from one activity to the next? Has the behavior happened before, and can you see a pattern for what may be triggering it? And finally, what is happening in the classroom when the student is behaving appropriately? How is it different? Then your third step is to look for the motive. In other words, ask yourself what need is the child trying to meet through this behavior? Once you get all that, you'll be ready to solve the case. Okay, want to see how this works? Great, let's open the case files. Case number one, Susie Refusey. Susie is a sweet second grader in your class. She plays well with others and can really light up a room. But she often refuses to participate in many group activities and you're stumped at how to get her more involved. Let's watch and see what happened before Susie refused to participate. Now let's ask our questions. Oh, I see. Susie refuses to participate when she's asked to read out loud. Now ask yourself, has this happened before? If so, then her motive may be that reading out loud makes her feel uncomfortable and she's trying to avoid feeling anxious. So how can you solve the case, or better yet, solve the problem? How about try inviting Susie to participate in the group activity in a way that highlights her strengths instead? Case number two, Runaway Clay. Clay is a fourth grader who's on the autism spectrum. Clay has a one-on-one -on -one buddy and generally does great in class. However, sometimes he'll just suddenly bolt out of the door without warning and you have no idea why. All right, let's review what happened before he ran out of class. Now let's look at our questions. Oh, I see. The music is getting louder. Has this happened before? If so, then his motive for running out of class may be to get away from feeling overwhelmed. In order to solve the case, next time offer Clay noise-canceling headphones or a break in a quiet area. Wow! Who knew that becoming Sherlock Holmes was really that easy? But hang on, there's one more thing before you go. This Sunday, if you have a student who's struggling, why not try becoming a behavior detective yourself? So today we learned some good tips to try to figure out why a student is struggling. But the truth is, sometimes we just may never know. But what we do know is that when a child is acting out, it means that they are struggling on the inside. So no matter what, always approach with empathy. Thanks for being here. See you next time.